divine service. My name is Kimberly and I'm so excited for our service today. I would like to take this chance for you guys to go on our Facebook page at Calvary Worship Center. I repeat, Calvary Worship Center. And as usual, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Calvary Worship Center Nairobi. Let's pray. God, we thank you for the gift of life. We thank you for everything that you have done for us. We thank you for this beautiful opportunity that you have given us to learn from something important from our teachers. And we pray that that important message that you may carry it on in life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's get started.
You're always right on time You're always pursuing Always pursuing Always pursuing me More than the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop Never gonna stop chasing me in order for you to make a difference. You believe that you have to wait until you're out of college and you get a job in order for you to make a difference? Well, that is not true because you know why? Because God has chosen you to make a difference now. God wants to use you to make a difference in this world now. Boys and girls, your time is now to make a difference and you might be thinking hmm i'm so young and i'm so little i'll just wait until i'm older boys and girls tomorrow may be too late for you and let me explain what i mean imagine that you are traveling to the united states to visit your friends and you are going to use an airplane and there's something really important about traveling or using an airplane. You have to be on time. If you are a little bit late, boys and girls, do you know what's going to happen? You will miss the flight. And boys and girl, girls, God has a time for you too. And that time is now, boys and girls. That time is now for you to make a difference 
Tomorrow may be too late, boys and girls. You can now encourage someone. You can pray for a sick loved one. You can, you know, encourage your loved ones or your brothers and sisters. You can tell other people about God, boys and girls. Your time is now to make a difference. You don't have to wait until you're older in order to make a difference. Because God wants to use you to make a difference, boys and girls. And today's lesson is more important than an airplane or not missing an airplane, boys and girls, or missing your flight. Today's lesson is about not missing God's time for you to make a difference. Boys and girls, don't miss what God wants to use you or use through you in order to make a difference. Don't give excuses. Don't say no to God. Be available to God because He wants to use you. And your time is now. Boys and girls, I hope that you are blessed. See you or at the end of the session. Bye. Hello boys and girls, um, my name is Teacher Sarah and I'm here for the Bible lesson. And today we are learning our story from the book of Esther. And the title of the message today is, Your Time Is Now. And I want us just to know a little bit about Esther. Esther was a queen and she came into the kingdom at a time when the previous queen had disobeyed the king. And so the king said, because this one has disobeyed me, then I'm going to get me another wife. And so that's how Esther came about. Esther was an orphan girl. And she was raised by a man who was called Mordecai. And the time when she came into the kingdom, the king had another man who was like second in his command in, the, in his kingdom. And this man was called Haman. And this man used to like, you know, to be praised, to be honored, he used, you know, to like when people see him, they bow down to him, sort of to worship him. Mordecai, on the other hand, feared God. He did not want to serve or to bow down to any other person or any other God or any other idol except the living God because he knew that he served the true God. And so many other times when he would pass by where Mordecai used to sit by the gate and Mordecai would not bow to him and he got so angry because Mordecai belonged to a race of people who had their own customs, they had their own way of life, and those were the Jewish people. And so Haman decided he's going to craft a plan how he is going to kill all the Jewish people because of Mordecai, because of the fact that Mordecai never used to bow down to him. So he felt Mordecai was disrespecting him. And of course, because he knew the Jewish people had their own customs, he wanted all of them to be killed because he knew them, they followed another god, not the gods that they would worship in this place. And so this Haman went to the king and he told the king, because he could not just decide to kill these people on his own, he had to have the king's decree. This king's decree, it's where now a king passes the rule. And this rule, he has now to be, they usually, they usually had a signet ring. And on this signet ring, it was like their signature. Once he puts that, like a signature on that letter, or whatever it is that he's releasing out, it was law and it had to be done. Otherwise, if you don't fulfill what the king has said has to be done, you will be killed. And so, he, this Haman went to the king to tell on Mordecai and of course he just came up with a scheme so that it will not be obvious it's because of Mordecai and wants you know Mordecai to be killed so he made it appear before the king that all these people the Jewish people were disrespecting their customs and they were disobeying and so he caused the king to be afraid of these people so that the king was seeing these people as a threat to him as a people who were against his leadership and probably a people who would disobey and rebel against him. And so when Haman came and said and told him about these people and how they were disobeying his rules, how they were rebelling against him, the king said, all right, what can we do about them? And so Mordecai said, let's kill them. 
you see let's kill them let's uh, uh, put a date where now every you know the people who belong to this land can kill these jewish people and so the king said that's fine with me and of course when mordecai had this he was so grieved he was so sad he was you know he he he, he could not believe what this Haman wanted to do but then he remembered Esther was in the palace right now Esther was the queen and because Esther was also a Jew he expected Esther to be able to at least go talk to the king so that the king would not be you know would not carry out that command and so when Esther was told by the messenger that had been sent by Mordecai about what was happening she said there's nothing I can do what do you want me to do I'm helpless. Right now, the king has not called me to go to him for like a month. I've not even seen the king. And I cannot just show myself to the king because you could not just go before the king if he had not summoned you or if he had not asked you to go and see him. And so Esther was afraid because anyone who would dare go to before the king when he had not summoned you, you would be killed. He used to have us scepter you know if he raised it like this then you're safe but if he did not raise it and it was down then you would be killed and so esther was afraid for her life and so she sent the message to mordecai you know saying like i can't be able because this king has not summoned me to go to him yet and mordecai sent this message to her if you don't you know he, he said your time is now esther this is your time. If you don't stand up for these people right now, who tells you that even you, you're going to be saved, you and your household? Because uh, the, God had made Esther to come into the kingdom and to become a queen at that time because, so that she could be a salvation to the Jewish people. Because God sees the end from the beginning. He knows everything that is happening in our lives. And even as when we've been created, and even as to be born at such a time as this, for us to be alive in this era, for you to be born in that home, for us to be born in this nation, whatever nation you've been born, it's for a purpose and it's for such a time as now because God has work for you. And so when Esther came into the kingdom, God had work for her and it was so that the Jewish people could be saved through her. She could be a deliverer. But she was, she did not know that was the reason. She, she was afraid and she thought probably it was because of her beauty that she was there before the king. But it was God who had put her there. And so of course when she had the message of Mordecai that he said that even if you don't stand with us at this time, God will raise another deliverer. But you and your people, your household will perish. So Esther said, all right then, I will go before the king. And she asked Mordecai and all the other Jewish people to pray for three days without eating. And so they prayed for three days without eating together with her. And after those days, she went before the king. And when she went before the king, the king was pleased with her. And he raised his scepter, he accepted her, and he asked her, what do you want, my king? Because he loved her. And she said, oh, if I please you, king, then I want to do a feast for you and come with Haman and oh when Haman heard that he was so happy and she did this banquet that was just a feast she prepared for them the best meals she put up the best fruits you know everything that was good she prepared for them and they came they dined with her they ate with her and then the next uh, after that the king said so what do you want, my king, my queen? Even if you want half of my kingdom, I'll give it to you. I'll give you anything you want. She said, okay, come back again to this place. You know, to my place. I'll, I'll again prepare for you a banquet. And so she did that. And so this time, when they came, back, she asked the king, king, why is it that you want to kill me? Why do you want to kill me? And the king asked, do I really want to kill you? And Esther said, yes. And she he asked her, how and when? Who is this who has said, you know, I want to kill you? And she said, because of this verdict that you have released, these are my people and I'm one of them. So that means you also want to kill me. And he said, no, this is not me. And of course, he turned to Haman and asked Haman, how dare you? How could you, you know, uh, cause me to do such, to make such a verdict? 
and he was so angry with Haman. He was not happy with him. And so uh, the king said, okay, your people are safe. And she, he said on the date when it was supposed, you know, your people were supposed to be killed, defend yourselves. Even you pick up your swords. Anyone who dares to come to kill you, you kill them as well. And so nobody dared to attack them. And this Haman, he was killed instead. He had prepared some uh, gallons, you know, where he was going to kill him. Uh, Mordecai he was killed. He was hanged there himself, you know. And so God was able to protect the Jewish people because Esther knew and understood that now was her time. And I want to ask you right now where you are at. Maybe it's in school where you need to stand up for God where you need to stand up for the truth and anything else that God need, asks you to stand up that you know is right, that you know is the will of God. I want you to know your time is now. And sometimes you will be afraid like Esther. She was afraid because she did not know whether she was able, because she did not know whether the king would accept her. But because God was with her, he made a way for her and they were saved because of her. Because she allowed God to use her. You need not to be afraid. God can use even little children. God can use anybody that avails themselves to him. God is there looking and wanting people that will say, I will stand for the truth. I will stand for what is right. I will not allow you know, to, people to go about doing things that are not right. Maybe bullying others, hurting others. I will stand for the truth. So this is our call today. And this, God wants us to know that our time is now. What are you going to do about the opportunities God has given you? About the places God has placed you? Let God show you what he needs you to do. And when he shows you, be confident. Know that God will strengthen you. God will give you favor. God will give you the wisdom and everything that you need to carry out the the work or what he wants you to do for him, for his glory and honor. So until next time, God bless you. Bye for now. Hello, children. Welcome to Kids Zone. Today we'll be doing the life story called The Fabulous Shoe Brothers. I hope you will enjoy and you will learn something new to take home with you today. Now, today we're going on a journey. We're taking a ride on a ship and they're loading the food on right away. They've loaded all kinds of different food and now they were loading the potatoes. The potatoes got smashed on the ground Ouch! Why doesn't anybody ever think about how we feel? Pete Potato complained. One of his brothers even fell out of the bag and nobody cared about picking him up. The sailors were loading all the food they needed for a long trip. There were peaches, oranges, carrots, meat and fresh water. The sailing ship was huge. It was taking about 50 sailors and their captain to a faraway country on the other side of the ocean. Tomorrow it was supposed to leave and it had to be loaded by tonight. Now it was the peaches' turn to get loaded. The peaches thought they were the most beautiful, fancy food that would go on the ship. Everybody could see they had an attitude with all the spinning, twisting, and checking in the mirror they did. Pete Potato was so excited about being on a ship. He had heard so many stories about pirate ships and how bad they were. Pete told the other potatoes, if I ever see a pirate ship at sea, I'll become the pirate of this ship and defend everybody. That's right, I'll protect everyone in this ship. I'll be the best pirate ever. Some of the other food on the ship had what Pete said. 
and they started to laugh at him. Hell, you think you can protect this ship? You're just a stupid potato. Yeah, you're just a dumb potato. You can't do anything. They kept laughing at him and calling him names. He started to accept what they were saying. What about you children? What have you accepted? Have you accepted that your family will always be a mess? Have you accepted that your school will never change? Don't accept things the way they are. Those things can change if you make a difference. But you have to understand that your time is not yesterday, it's not today, it's not tomorrow, it's now, this moment. Fresh water couldn't take it anymore. He was a bucket of water that was sitting there listening to the food make fun of peat potato. Hey, he yelled, stop it. I can't believe you're telling him that. He can't make a difference. How dare you stand there and make him feel like he can't do anything. Pete, you can make a difference. After being on the sea for one month, the lookout spotted another ship. A couple of hours later, he was able to spot the flag. Pirates! He yelled. A pirate ship is coming. Pete was looking out the window and he couldn't believe his eyes. He started to scream. But why was Pete screaming? He always said if a pirate ship came, he would protect the ship. But the other food had convinced him that he was a dumb potato and now Pete really believed there was nothing he could do. He wanted to hide. Once the pirate ship was close enough, they started the battle. The potatoes were so scared. All you could hear in the belly of the ship was sword fighting, screaming, and cannonballs flying. The potatoes felt so useless because they couldn't do anything to help. The explosions of the cannonballs made the ships shake and cause waves as big as houses. Then, one of the cannonballs hit the ship and ripped a hole in the bottom of the ship. Water came splashing in. The peaches and the stakes got even more scared. A leak! Somebody do something! Help! Help! It was a hole as big as a man's fist. The water came splashing in. The peaches were already floating in water. All of a sudden, fresh water noticed something. She called Pete Potato over and said, Pete, you're perfect. You fit right in the hole. Pete looked at fresh water and started tattering. No, fresh water, I can't do that. I'm too stupid. I'm just a potato. Pete Potato knew what fresh water wanted him to do. But there was no way he would do it. He was too scared. Pete gave excuses for why he wasn't able to help. He said he was too stupid and he was just a potato. Excuse after excuse. Children, are you giving excuses to God when he wants you to tell someone about him? Are you giving God excuses when he wants you to invite your friend to Kate's church? If you keep giving excuses, you will never make a difference. That's not what God wants. God wants to use you to make a difference. Pete had to fight a big fight on the inside. Could he really make a difference? What would happen if he wasn't big enough? Probably they would sink anyway. 
Maybe he should just accept the situation as it is. Time was ticking away. If Pete was going to do something, he had to do it now. After thinking about it for a while, he realized that he was the only one who could save the ship. So he took a big jump and landed right in the hole. He fit perfectly. It was as if he was made just for this hole. The water stopped splashing in the boat. Pete Potato made a difference. He saved the ship from sinking. Fresh water just kept repeating. Thank you so much, Pete. The potatoes were looking for the peaches. What happened to them? They all got spoiled in the water. The peaches didn't make it. Now, children, some of you need to realize that your time is now. Just like Pete Potato, you're hesitating to step up because you're scared. Today you need to make a decision that your time is now to make a difference in somebody's life. God has chosen you for such a time as this. Will you stand up and make a difference now or will you say no to God? The choice is up to you. How many of you will start making a difference today? Raise your hand. Now let's pray, children. Dear God, I have always thought that I needed to be bigger or older to make a difference. But today I learned that my time is now. God, show me where you want me to start, where I can start making a difference. And God, I pray that you give me that strength to not make excuses and not accept the way things are. Thank you for using me to make a difference. In Jesus' name, amen. That's all, children, for today. I hope you have learned that your time is now to make a difference for God. Thank you. Boys and girls, we have come to the end of our service, but I hope you remember the lesson that we have been taught today. Don't be like Pete you have seen in our story who was giving excuses and saying no to God. Be like Queen Esther as we have learned in our Bible lesson who availed herself to be used by God to make a difference to her people. Boys and girls, I know when I was young and also when I'm still old, yeah, growing old, but I've given God excuses and I've told God that he can't use me as a lady or maybe as young as I am. And also sometimes we or you have given God excuses and said no to God. And still God is a gracious God and he's willing to still use you as young as you are. Let us pray boys and girls. God, we want to first come to you asking you to forgive us, Lord, for the times the Lord we have just given excuses and said no to you, God, and we have doubted you and ourselves, God. Lord, we want to thank you for choosing us for the privilege of being used by you and you wanting to use us, God, to make a difference, God. I pray for the young and young girl and boy who is watching God and they are questioning themselves. They feel that they are too young or too little God to make a difference, God. I pray that you may give them the confidence in you, Lord, and that, Lord, they will trust you, God, that, Lord, still you want to use them, God, and they will say yes to you as Esther in the Bible did, God. We give you the glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name we pray and believe. Amen. Boys and girls, thank you for tuning in from the beginning to the end. And until next Sunday, bye. Door. Jesus, you have my heart. Now and forevermore, you're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing me.
in me You're always pursuing, always pursuing, always pursuing me Oh, your love is chasing, your love is chasing, your love is chasing me More than the air I breathe I need you here with me And you're never gonna stop, never gonna stop And you're never gonna stop, never